Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Thank you for your good work. Thank you for your songs. You've really blessed us. And uh, may you be seated, please. Amen, amen. So today, this is the men's day in the calendar of the uh, Kenya Assemblies of God everywhere, be it in Nairobi, uh, Kisumu, and other towns. The men are leading the service. It's not only here, but countrywide. They are doing everything. They are singing. They are ushering. And uh, they are bringing the word. And they are also leading the service. Praise the Lord. I want to also appreciate our senior pastor, uh, Reverend Mary Juma, for allowing us to be before you today. Praise the Lord. We do, cannot take it for granted, but we have to say Thank you for what he has done. She told us that she'll be here uh, a little bit late, but we can still uh, go on. Praise the Lord. It's a man day today, and uh, actually you have seen the responsibilities of uh, men. Mr. Ochiel has already elaborated some of the responsibilities. But today uh, we are not going to really talk about the responsibilities of a man in uh, our houses, but um, we are going to uh, talk on um, the subject called uh, Appeal Against the, the Verdict. Praise the Lord. I want you to be attentive. In the next 30 to 35 minutes or 40, I will be over and then I will be able to welcome uh, Pastor Louis I am going to give some of the uh, secrets on how men shall uh, appeal against some of the verdicts. Amen? At the time of distress and at the time of calamities and at the time of problem how men can appeal against those against the verdict during those times. Praise the Lord. Not only men, even women. Okay? So, uh, I want us to just before we read the word of God, the knowledge of the scripture does not guarantee a future. It is the practice of the knowledge of the scripture that guarantees the future. Amen. God bless you. God bless you so much. And our reference verse today, our reference verse today will be from the book of James 2 verses 26. James 2 verses 26, that is going to be our reference verse uh, verse from the Bible which says that without faith sorry which says that faith without work is dead that is our reference Bible but we, we, our reference verse but we have a main verse faith without work or faith without action is dead praise the Lord faith without action is dead imani bila matendo imekufa sana amen I'm going to talk on a, on a subject or on a topic called Appeal Against the Verdict. Praise the Lord. Appeal Against the Verdict. So first of all, let us see what is a verdict. Praise the Lord. What is a verdict? A verdict is a judge a decision in a court of law. Praise the Lord. When there are two parties, uh, the, when there is a case in two parties, with, within two parties in a court of law, the final decision, praise the Lord, the final decision is called the verdict. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Inaitwa uamuzi wa hakimu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Amen. 
And at the end of the case, there must be a winner and a loser. A winner of the case and a loser of the case. Amen? If the loser, it will be fine with the, with the winner, he will celebrate and he will enjoy and will go there. But if the loser is not satisfied with the case, he is going to do what is called an appeal. Praise the Lord. He is going to appeal, which means that he is going to go to another case. Nafikiria wa soilu anasema kukata rufani. Is it kufani? Yes, Mama Mary, I think I'm right. Kukata rufani. Huyu mtu hakuweza kukubaliana na ile kesi yake na akapeleka hiyo kesi kule juu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. Tuko pamoja. Okay, let's just go step by step and uh, in the next 40 minutes I will be through and then we'll see how we can also um, appeal against the verdict. Let us open our books, our Bible. Please have your Bible. Let us open our Bible in the Second Kings, uh, chapter twenty. Second Kings, chapter twenty. Please, Second Kings, chapter twenty. Are we all there? To my fika pale sote. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. Amen. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. I have the, King, uh, the old King James Version here, but it's a bit complicated with some of the people who recently went to school. So 2 Kings chapter 20, we are going to read from verse 1 to verse 6. Praise the Lord. Verse 1 to verse 6. Praise the Lord. Our topic today is appeal against uh, the verdict. Second King chapter 20. I hope we are all there. The Bible says that in those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order for you shall die and you shall not live. Praise the Lord. You shall die and you shall not live. Then he turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was right in your sight. And Hezekiah wept. Verse 4. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the temple court. That the word of the Lord came to him. Saying. Return and tell Hezekiah the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord. The God of David your father. I have heard your prayers. And I have seen your tears. Surely I will, I will heal you. And, and on the third day you shall go up to the house of, Lord, of the Lord. And I will add, that is verse 6, I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hands of king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. For my own sake and for the sake of my people and for the sake of my servant David. It is the verse or it is the chapter, it is the book that a lot of people, you know about it, you know the story Hezekiah, you know uh, 
how he cried unto God, you know how he did everything. But today we are going to see how Hezekiah uh, appealed against the God, God's verdict. Praise the Lord. Vile Hezekiah aliweza kukata rufani. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. The Bible says that in those days, wakati hule, Hezekiah became sick to a point of death. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Alikuwa mgonjwa mpaka anafanya nini? Yuko karibu kufa. Then, the prophet, is, the prophet uh, Amos went to him and told him, Isaiah, Ezekiah, prepare your house. Praise the Lord. Prepare your house for the sickness you are having. You are not going to live, but surely you will die. Praise the Lord. You know, during those days, the Bible says that the Lord cannot do anything unless he tells his servants, the prophet. Praise the Lord. So here the prophet has been sent to Hezekiah. The prophet Hamos has been sent to Hezekiah. Go and tell Hezekiah that the kind of sickness, the kind of problem he's having, he is not going to live. Surely he is going to die. Praise the Lord. Wengine wetu mkisikia namna hiyo mnasema ho ah sasa nimekwisha. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Nimekwisha kabisa nitakufa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Sitaweza kuwa mzima tena. Kama huyu nabii mwenyewe Amos ndio amekuja na huyu ni messenger wa Mungu amekuja basi itaweza kufa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. But the Bible says that Hezekiah had some courage. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. The Bible says that he turned towards the wall. He turned and faced the wall and prayed. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Aligeuka, akaangalia ukuta na akaomba. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. He never listened to the prophet uh, Amos. He never listened everything, but he turned in face his face to the wall and prayed to his God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Alijua kwamba hakuna anaweza kusikia maombi yake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Ila ni Mungu tu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. And so Hezekiah turned to the wall and, to, and prayed to the God. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Remember how I have walked before you faithfully. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Mungu Ezekiah anamkumbusha Mungu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Ninaomba uwe huko hapa, uwe na jambo la kuweza kumkumbusha Mungu katika jina la Yesu. Amen. May you have something to remind God of what you have done in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, I have done what is Remember how I have walked before you uh, in faith. Remember what I've walked before you in faith, O oh God. Remember how I have walked before you with a loyal heart. Remember what how I've walked before you with a loyal heart and how and what I have done good and how I've done good in your sight. Kumbuka jinsi nimetembea mbele zako kwa moyo mzuri. Jinsi Bwana nimetenda yale mazuri Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Vile Yesu vile nimetenda mambo mazuri mbele yako Bwana asifiwe sana. Hezekiah first prayed. He went to God with prayers. And then at last the Bible says that uh, the Bible says that after uh, Hezekiah had prayed to God the Bible says that and Hezekiah wept. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Hezekiah wept. Wengine wetu tukiwa na shida, tukienda kwa Mungu labda tumekumbwa na maneno, tumekumbwa na shida nyingi, what we normally do, we just go in front of God and start crying. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. We should tell God what we have done. We should not be anxious of everything. The Bible says in Philippians 4:6 that let us not be anxious in everything for everything but in everything by prayers and supplication. Praise the Lord. By prayers and supplication. Let our request known to God. Praise the Lord. Let our request known to God. And God will be able to hear us. So Hezekiah thought of that verse and he went to God and prayed to him. Praise the Lord. He never cried. And then after that, he cried. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Kwa hivyo nimekuja hapo wapendwa ndugu yangu nikiwaambia kwamba tukiwa na shida tunaweza kubadilisha kile uh, kimesemekana juu yetu. Ezekaya uh, turned the verdict of God only by telling him what he has been doing, how he has been walking before God in truth. Praise the Lord. How he has walked before God with a loyal heart and how uh, and the things that he has done before God. The things that he has done before God which pleases God. And those things made Hezekiah, uh, made God to turn his verdict against Hezekiah. Praise the Lord. May you do something that will change the verdict of God in your life. May you do something that you will change the, the, the verdict of God in your life. Amen. May you have a, a loyal heart that will be able to change the verdict of God. Amen. May you do something that will be able to change the verdict of God. Ezekiah wept. What did Ezekiah do? Okay. When you go back to the story, we found that Ezekiah ruled Judah for almost 29 years. And he loved God. Bwana Yesu asifuwe sana. Hezekiah alipenda mungu. Bwana Yesu asifuwe sana. And the Bible says that he removed high places. Amen. Hizu ndi okazi zake za Hezekiah. The Bible also says that he broke sacred places. He broke sacred places. Zile miungu ambao wana wa Israel wakua kiwenda kuomba wanakaa chini. Wakati Hezekiah alivu kuwa katika mamlaka aliweza kuvunja vunja hiyo miungu. Bwana Yesu asifuwe sana. Na Biblia pina sema, he broke the serpent that was made by Moses. Amen? Praise the Lord. For the Bible readers, you know that when the children of Israelites were leaving from Egypt for Canaan, at some stage on the way, Moses uh, erected a bronze snake. Eh? And the children of Israelites when they were beaten by the snake and they looked at the serpent, they, were going to, they, 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 were, they would be healed. Praise the Lord. So the serpent was still there during the time of Hezekiah. And also the children of Israel were still burning incense from there. So what Hezekiah did, he broke all the, uh, 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 the bronze and all the images that were not godly. And the Bible says that he trusted in the God of Israel. So at the time of calamities, at the time of sickness, at the time of distress, Ezekiah reminded God on what he did. And so, God changed his verdict against Ezekiah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you put your hands together for God? Amen. The Bible says that when Ezekiah had prayed, he cried. And then after cried, the Bible says that before the prophet Amos went out in the temple court, I think it must have been a, 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 big, a big church or something, a temple court, maybe an aisle like this. Probably uh, Hezekiah was at the, at the pulpit. He was praying. Praise the Lord. And after the, the, delivering the message to Hezekiah, then prophet Amos started walking away. Then after, the, after the, uh, the prayers of Hezekiah and the cries of Hezekiah, the Lord then appeared to, uh, to Amos again, the prophet Amos again, and told him, please go back. Praise the Lord. He must have maybe reached at the middle court of that temple. Told uh, Amos, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Praise the Lord. That I've 
heard his prayer. Amen. I have heard his prayer. And seen his tears. Praise the Lord. I have heard his prayers and seen his tears. So brethren, I'm here to tell you that when we come before God with our problems, with our distress, let us pray to God first. Praise the Lord. Let us uh, 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 tell God our problem first. And then after that, we can cry. You can also wail on the ground. You can do everything. But as long as you know that you have told God something concerning your problem. Praise the Lord. So, uh, Ezekiah turned God's verdict. And the Lord told him that, I will heal you on the third day. Amen? Go and tell. He told the, 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 God told uh, Amos, go and tell my, 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 the leader of my people, Ezekiah, that I've heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. I'm going to heal you on the third day. Okay? And I'm also going to add 15 years on top of your life. Praise the Lord. I will add 15 years. I will heal you and I will add 15 years. And not only that, I'm going to save you. I'm going to fight your battle against the Assyria. Praise the Lord. Amen. So may your deeds make God to fight your battle today in the name of Jesus. May your action make God to fight for you today in the name of Jesus. May your quality walk with God make God to fight for you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, men here today, I'm here to tell you that it is your responsibility to appeal against God in your houses. Praise the Lord. Ni wa ume ndiyo wako umbele. Bwana Yesu asifue sana. Muna hao na hapa ni Ezekaya tundi walikuwa mkubwa. Kaenza mdumume. Akaanza kulia. Akasema mungu ni kumbele zako. Mungu ni mekufanyia hivi. Mungu ni kumbele hivi. Kwa hivu wa ume ambao tuku hapa we need to be bold and we need to take courage. We need to have something to do that can make God change uh, his verdict on our life. Bwana Yesu asifue sana. Remember our reverse, our, our, our reference verse says, faith without work is dead. Praise the Lord. We can know the word of God. We can read the word of God. But without mixing that faith with work, it's nothing. Bwana Yesu asifue sana. We normally say that, oh, give and it shall be given unto you. Give full tithe and everything. Sour, everybody knows. But are we doing that? So, Ezekiah beat God because of his action. Praise the Lord. He walked before God in faithfully. He walked before God with a loyal heart. Praise the Lord. And he, he, he did what was good in the presence of God. And with those qualities, uh, those qualities are the ones that made uh, God change his appeal uh, against the man of God, Hezekiah. Praise God. Praise God. Are we together? It is the work you are doing that will be able to fight for you. Hezekiah reminded God. May you have something that you can remind God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we are going, just going to see only these things, what do they mean? First, uh, to walk before God in truth. Those are the prayers of Ezekiah. What does that mean? And the second, we are going to see to walk before God with a loyal heart. What does that mean? Finally, we shall finish with to do what is good in the sight of God. Amen? What do they mean? When I say that walking before God in truth, what do we mean? It's just saying walking before God in truth. What do we mean by that? Walking before God in truth means to be faithful in God. Praise the Lord. It means to be faithful in God. The Bible says in Hebrew 11.6 that without faith we cannot please God. Amen. Without faith we cannot please God. And for those who come before God must believe that he is. Those who come before God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. Praise the Lord. 
He is the rewarder of them that only seek him diligently. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Wale wanaomtafuta kwa bidii ndio anaweza kuwa thawabu. Amen. So to walk with God means to be faithfully. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. I hope we are together. We can change the verdict by what we are doing. Let us open our books on um, Genesis uh, chapter sorry Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20 verses uh, 3 and see a man uh, who was uh, Genesis uh, 20 verses 3 not 20 sorry mistaken just Genesis Genesis 23 sorry Genesis 22 verses 3 I beg your pardon for that Genesis 22 verses uh, 3 we want to see a man who had faith Whose faith was tested by God. A man who walked with God. A man who was obedient to God. A man who had full of faith. Okay, I'm going to read. Uh, so, okay, this is where Abraham's faith was being tested. And notice from this faith that we can walk in truth with God and also go against such the verdict that have been put in us by, by God. Amen. So Abraham, Genesis 22 verse 3, So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkeys and took two of his, of his men with him. And Isaac his son, and they split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back. So Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it on ice on and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the, the fire on his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamp for the burnt offering? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Here we are seeing a man of faith. We need to have faith. Amen. To walk with God. Uh, 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 to, 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 to walk with God in a, in a quality way. Amen. So God told Abraham. That take your son, your only son. And go to the land of Moriah. Go to the land of Moriah. The mountains of Moriah. And sacrifice him. Abraham never said anything. Abraham went, took a donkey and some of his uh, uh, servants and off they left. Praise the Lord. We are looking for a man whose faith moved God. So Abraham rose in the morning and went all through to the land of Moriah. Praise the Lord. And as he reached the land of, the, 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 the land of Moriah, there were many mountains. He never knew which mountain it was. So he went on looking faithless, faithfully. He went on looking. Okay, this is the land of Moriah. Where is the land? Where is the land? Where is the land? The donkeys are there and Isaac is there. Where is the land? And then the Bible says that on the third day he saw that place. Praise the Lord. On the third day Abraham saw the mountain. The mountain in the land of Moriah where he was supposed to give his uh, son as a sacrifice. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Abraham akamwambia wafanyikazi nyinyi bakini hapa. Amen. Pamoja na huyu punda, Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Mimi na Isaac tunaenda juu kumtolea Mungu sadaka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. So as they were climbing the mountain, one of the mountains in, in, uh, in, 
in, in the land of Moriah. They went and maybe at the time they, they, they reached the middle maybe of the mountain, Isaac told him, Father, Daddy, I can see here there is some firewood. I can see uh, here there is some wood and everything. But where there is the sacrifice? Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Where is the sacrifice? When Jesus said, Fue sana. Abraham said, Abraham, a man full of faith, said that, my son, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide the sacrifice. And so we see that as Abraham was going to sacrifice his son, the Lord provided a lamp for him to sacrifice instead of his son. And after that, the Lord said that, I know that you love me. I know that you have faith with me. I will be able to bless you. I will be able to bless you and your siblings shall be as many as the sand on the seashore. Praise the Lord. So that is what is meant by to walk before God in truth means to be faithful. Let us have Abrahamic faith and we will be able to walk before God in truth and also turn against some of the verdict that will be laid on us at the time of calamities. Praise God. At the time of distress. Praise God. And at the time of, uh, 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 of, of sickness, when we remind God what we are going to do, God will be able to change, to change his mind. But unless we have faith, it's not possible for us to change this verdict. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. Are we together? Yes, we are changing the verdict. The second prayer of Hezekiah is to walk before God with a loyal heart. The Bible says that Hezekiah walked before God with a loyal heart. He reminded God, God, I walked before you with a loyal heart. What do we mean by loyal heart? Yani moyo mkunjufu. Tunamaanisha nini moyo mkunjufu. This means that to have a liberal heart. Bwana Yesu asifue sana. Kuwa na moyo mkunjufu. Kuwa mpeaji. Mtu ambaye anapeana. You know what I mean by a liberal heart. Mpaka uwe mpeaji. Bwana Yesu asifue sana. Let us turn our book into the book of uh, Luke chapter 7 and see a man who was liberal. And what made and because he was liberal what made him or what did he do uh, what did he do to succeed or to make his ways okay? Uh, let us read the book of um, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Okay, we're not going to read it all. Maybe we'll read maybe from verse 1 to verse 5 and then we finish up there. Now, when Jesus has concluded all his saying in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum Cap and a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent the elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal the servant. And when they come to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do, this was deserving. For he loves our nation and had built our synagogue. If you have maybe a pen, you can line that. For he loved our nation and has built our synagogue. Praise the Lord. For this man deserves to be done this, because he loved our nation and built synagogue those are those are his actions then jesus went with them and went with them and when he was already not afar from the house the centurion sent friends to him saying to him lord do not trouble yourself for i am not worthy that you should enter uh, my roof therefore i did not even think myself worthy to come to you but say a word and uh, my servant will be healed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. We are looking at the aspect of loyalty. 
eh, to walk before God with a loyal heart. What do you mean by that? That means to be liberal. The Bible says that there was a centurion whose servant was sick. A centurion is an officer in an army. Okay? So his servant was very, very sick. And when he heard that Jesus was passing somewhere, he sent some of some his men to Jesus. Please go and tell Jesus to come to, to, to heal my, 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 my daughter. The Bible says that the daughter was so ill to a point of death. Praise the Lord. So they went and told Jesus, Jesus, the servant of our, of our boss, or the servant of our leader, or the servant of our man, is sick. Can you come and pray for him? But I think Jesus was a bit, okay, there were a lot of people uh, following Jesus because he was making a lot of, he was doing a lot of miracles, he was praying to people. But then these guys tell that Jesus, this man deserves. Why? Because he has built a synagogue in our nation. Praise the Lord. May your work be able to change your verdict. Amen. May your work be able to change your verdict today in the name of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus agreed to go and heal the, the, the centurion servant. Why? Because the centurion servant, uh, the centurion was loyal. The Bible says that the Bible says that he deserved because he loved his people and he built them synagogue. That, what, that is what moved Jesus to go and heal the centurion uh, daughter. But as Jesus was coming, okay, Jesus was about to come, he told those guys to tell Jesus that, oh, he's not worthy to come under my feet. Okay? Let him say something. Let him just say something. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Let Jesus say something and my son, my, my daughter is going to be healed. And he gave an example that I'm also an officer in the army. If I tell this man, go, he goes. If I tell this man, come, he comes. Praise the Lord. So Jesus saw his faith and the daughter of the centurion or the servant of the centurion got healed. Why? Number one, because the centurion was liberal. The centurion's heart was liberal and he also walked with God with a loyal heart. Praise God. So when you have a loyal heart, you will be able to change God's uh, words against you. You will be able to change God's verdict against you. You will be able to tell God, see what I have done. See, this is what I have done for you. And God will be able to hear. Do you have something that you can tell God at the time of calamity? Praise God. Do you have something that you have done that you can remind God at the time of distress? Amen? Please have something. Have something that you can do or you can tell God. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. Um, and the third one, which is the last one, is to do what is good in the sight of God. Remember our reference verse is that faith without work is dead. Your faith must be followed by your works. Praise the Lord. Imani yako mpaka iambatane na matendo yako. Ikiwa matendo yako ni mazuri, basi ndiyo unaweza kumuambia mungu. Kumbuka. Eh? Unaweza kumuambia mungu jinsi ya zekaya. Ame, ame. Kumbuka sadaka yangu hapa madhabauni. E mungu. Taangalia vile napitia sasa. Kumbuka jinsi nimekutendea hii. Nimekutendea hii. Nimekutendea hii. Bwana yosa sifuwe sana. I can remember during the time of our late bishop, there was a man here who was called uh, uh, Ambrose. Praise the Lord. Ambrose used to come here every morning and to clean this altar and to clean the, 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 the seats and to clean the church. Praise the Lord. And Amos was an adult. A married man with children going to school and Amos had lost his job. So what, could, what, what Amos could do, he could just come here and clean, okay, and do this, uh, the cleaning on, on, on the pulpit and clean the chairs and everything. One afternoon when 
Amos, uh, I mean, Ambrose was here cleaning the altar. He got a phone call. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Are we together? Your works will follow you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. He got a phone call. Are you, are you Ambrose? Yes, we need you. Where? In one of the biggest hotels. So he went and Amos got a job as a manager in one of the biggest hotels in Mombasa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Let us put our hands together for God. Amen. The sacrifice he was doing here by cleaning here opened his, his ways. I can remember maybe when he was at his home, he said, God, see how I've been cleaning your church. See how I've been working your church. And I have nothing, oh God, what can I do? God had his prayer. And Amos Ambrose is still a manager until this time. Even though he's transferred, but he's still a man manager in the same capacity in Tanzania. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Praise God. May you find something that you can do in the house of God that will change God's verdict at the time of calamity. Calamity. Amen. May you find something that you can do before God that can change your your life. Amen. Praise God. Uh, let me tell you that you can serve God in any capacity in this church. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Popote unaweza kumtumikia Bwana. Si mpaka usimame hapa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. It's just by grace that I'm here. Okay? Pata kitu cha kufanya kama ni kutengeza madhabahuni hapa, tengeza. That is work. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Kama ni kutengeza viti, Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Hiyo pia ni kazi. Watu wote hawawezi kuja madhabahuni. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Ukifanya kazi hata huko, Mungu atakuona huko huko. Because we are all ministers. May you find something that you can do in the house of God. Last but not least, we are not going to read this thing because time is not uh, on my side. Uh, we are going to look for a man who sacrificed to the Lord. A man who sacrificed to the Lord and changed the verdict of God. This is no. Uh, in the book of Genesis 8.20, we are not going to read that. We all know the story of Noah, his sacrifice to the Lord. And as the time he was sacrificing to the Lord, the Lord smelled a sweet aroma. mazuri wakati Abrahama. Sorry, wakati Noah alikuwa akiweza kutoa madabiu yake kanisani bwana yesu asifiwe sana na mungu wakasema kamwe sitaweza kuharibu nchi tena na mvua bwana yesu asifiwe sana so our good work before god can avert curses bwana yesu asifiwe sana bwana our good work before god can avert curses may you find time something to do uh, in front of god that can avert, avert all the curses that you have. So, um, I'm here to tell you that we can appeal against the God verdict by what we are doing. We started by saying that the knowledge of scriptures does not have even any, any guarantee. We can know, we can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But if we don't put the, 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 what we read into action, then it's nothing. Ezekiah turned the verdict because of his action. See how I have walked before you in faith. Amen? Second one, see how I have walked before you with a loyal heart. And the third one, see how I have walked, uh, how, uh, how I have done what is good in your presence. And with those remarks, I pray that you find something to do that will change the verdict your verdict at the time of uh, calamities. Amen. May you find something to do that will change your life. Amen. As the life of Hezekiah was changed, he was healed. Your life is, you are going to be healed in the name of Jesus. You shall be healed in the name of Jesus. But let your works go in front of you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I now take this opportunity. Uh, to welcome Pastor Louis to come and welcome um, Pastor Chiel. Praise God.
Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much for being attentive. I hope you have left. You are going to live here a changed person.